Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is John, also known as Megahertz, and today we're going to be building a collision detection system for walls and a ground check system on my existing player controller using Bolt Visual Scripting with Unity. This is actually the third video in the series, and so if you're wanting to follow along step by step and have my finished player controller, which I showcased at the start of this series, then you're totally encouraged to do that. Just follow the first video in the series link in the description and go back to the start. If, however, you're just interested in how to set up collision detection for your already existing controllers using Bolt Visual Scripting in Unity, then let's press on. So we're going to be implementing several macros in this build. I would encourage you to pause the video, create these new flow macros, and put them inside your player movement folder inside of macros. Um, and I would encourage you to do that now because I'm not going to be building them on screen. So just go ahead and pause the video for each of these, build them, and then we'll implement them in just a second. The first macro we're going to build is the on trigger exit and enter macro, which comes courtesy of One Wheel Studio. Thanks, man. Uh, this was really helpful for me. Um, also, we're going to build the blocked left macro and uh, the blocked right macro, which are very similar. Then we're going to build the wall collision front macro and then the grounded macro. So go ahead and build these and we'll put them in uh, as soon as you're done. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our player character. I'm assuming you already have an existing movement function already established. We're going to scroll down to where it says variables, and we're going to add three new bool variables. One is uh, grounded. I can spell grounded. And make that a uh, boolean. The next one is going to be blocked left. That one is also boolean and the same thing for blocked right except that the boolean as well leave them all false okay so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our player game object and we're going to create an empty twice let's go ahead and create two of those the first one we're going to name feet position and then the second one we're going to name front position Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to start with our feet position uh, game object and we are going to add a box collider 2D to that. And we are going to set that to trigger and then we're going to edit the size of that. Uh, let's make that 0.3 on the X and 0.1 on the Y. Zooming in on our character, we're gonna need to position that just slightly under his feet. Um, and uh, again, we need the zero uh, X offset. We don't want to cause any problems with that. So uh, let's go to our front position and we're going to do the same thing, Box Collider 2D. And uh, for the X, we're going to give that a 0.1 and for the Y, we're going to give that a 0.4. Is that right? Oh, I, I did the wrong thing. Zero, zero, point 0.1, point 0.4. There we go. All right, and then we're just going to kind of position that to the right of the player just a little bit. So whenever we click the player, we should see, and this needs to be centered a little better. Um, we'll try to put that just right up underneath the player. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. Now, we don't want our uh, feet position to uh, overlap and actually hit our uh, front position. I think I forgot to set this front position as a trigger. Both of these need to be set as a trigger. Okay, there's one more thing I would encourage you to go ahead and take care of now. Clicking your player character on the rigid body, make sure that collision detection is set to continuous and not discrete. That way uh, there will never be a problem with updating when it comes uh, to a wall or to the ground. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna need to do is we're going to need to add that uh, grounded macro that you built earlier to our feet position. So go ahead and go to add component, add a flow machine to uh, the feet, feet position. And uh, under flow machine, we're going to select the macro grounded. So uh, that should be on the feet position now. Let me very quickly just try to explain what it is that this is doing. Um, inside the on trigger enter and exit uh, macro uh, or super unit, we uh, have a, uh, a trigger searching for whenever this box collider uh, triggers with something of a certain tag, 
then we are going to say it entered. Same thing for exit. What is the tag? Well, if you actually look at the platforms, uh, this whole layer I have set under the platforms tag. So whenever the feet position um, lines up with something that is the platform tag, so you're gonna type in platforms right there. Whenever it enters that uh, tag, it's actually going to set the grounded variable that we set and established on our player to true. Now notice I have this find with tag. We're gonna set up a singleton principle here in just a second. So it actually it uses an app variable, but uh, for some reason, and maybe somebody can help me understand why, it threw up errors. Like this is the first thing that it detects for some reason and it's not supposed to do that. Uh, when you start with the singleton principle, um, I couldn't use that. So whenever it collides with the ground, then uh, it's going to set it as grounded and it's also gonna set our animator bool to grounded, which we're going to establish and use in a later video. And then our, uh, if it's, it, when, once it exits, so when you jump and when you exit, it's going to set grounded to not true. Uh, same thing for the animator bool. I think I actually forgot one important step. Whenever I hit play, it was throwing up an error. And the reason why is because my player is not tagged to player yet. So go ahead and tag your player to player. And then you should see that on collision enter with the grounded unit that we should have a grounded variable marked as true, which we do. The next thing that we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna to need to go to our front position and then we're going to add a flow machine to that as well. And then we're going to add the uh, wall collision front macro to that. Um, and uh, this essentially is working the same way whenever this comes in collision with a platform because it's all on the same platform, then it's going to check whether or not it is blocked left or right. Um, and it is gonna set the bool to true or false. Uh, depending on whenever it enters and exits. Now this can be a little confusing here. I've got a lot of branch statements set up. Um, and um, basically you might be wondering why uh, I only have one set up. And the reason why is because when we get to our uh, animation for our player, we're actually gonna flip the scale. So this little square right here is going to flip to the left whenever he's going left. And it's gonna flip to the right with the scale whenever he's going to the right. And so that makes this a little bit complicated whenever we have a, an enter and an exit on the um, on the platform. And so the way that I have this essentially set up is it's saying get the scale of the player. Is it greater than zero or is it less than zero? So greater than zero, if uh, the scale is greater than zero, it means he's facing to the right. If it's less than zero, it means he's facing to the left. And so I have this set up to true and false. So whenever uh, let's say, for example, whenever he enters and he's facing the uh, right, then um, we need it to say blocked right whenever it enters, and we need it to say uh, not blocked right whenever he exits. So that's essentially how that's working, and we only want that to happen. We want it to stop movement whenever it's grounded. So that's why we have that. We're gonna set up just in just a second, a singleton principle that this is actually gonna pull uh, from the player. And if you notice that little green line, I understand it's kind of hard to see, but that little green line goes all the way to here. The reason we're doing that is because these are children and it's checking the parent object of player for whether or not it is grounded. If it is, well then it's going to set that uh, blocked right to uh, false, and if it isn't, well then, again, uh, it's not gonna do anything. So the reason we're doing that is primarily for our animations, which we're gonna set up in our next video. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to go to our master file under player, on non-combat, master, and uh, you should see our movement and sprint check here. Um, we're going to actually set a, what's called the singleton principle. So uh, under under that uh, fuzzy finder, click uh, or type in start and get our start event. And then we're going to set a variable. And it needs to be an application variable. We're gonna call that player. And then we're going to do that on ourselves. So whenever we start the game, it should establish our player 
as an application game object. So let's check that real quick and just make sure that's working. And that is what our uh, collision for our wall collision is actually going to be checking. So if you go over here to app, you should notice that player game object is under our app now. And it did that, it fired that whenever it started. Now, we're not gonna be able to uh, make sure that our block left is working until we set up our animation in the next video and our scale flips whenever we go towards the left. So we're gonna fix that whenever we do our animation, but you notice that the grounded function is checked and you should see that blocked right fires whenever we hit block right. Now, one of the things that you're seeing here is it's saying, it's throwing up errors, it says, hey, grounded and sprinting does not exist in parameter. So what's the deal? We're gonna address that in the next video.